let's talk Donovan Klingon, who's gotten a lot of love ahead of the 24 draft. Um, obviously was on the title winning UConn team and a 7-2 freshman who really impressed on defense is gonna is gonna turn heads. So let's talk Klingon. Um, we'll evaluate his defense and yeah. Oh, um, if you would like, go subscribe to my Patreon. It is live if you want more exclusive voting benefits um, or more contact direct with me. Um, that would be amazing. Even if you can just like and subscribe, that would be great. So let's get into it. Donovan Klingon is huge. Like, I don't mean to be reductive when I say this is, like, probably his biggest strength, that he is just an enormous person. I mean, I mean, c combined with other things, but, like, he's able to, like, stand in one spot and just pivot, kind of, and block out the sun and guard everyone at once. It's really impressive. Um, he's just such a deterrent at the rim with his size, where when there isn't, like, a threatening perimeter or cutter, like... Parking Klingon at the rim and just letting him swat everything is great. And as we're going to talk about, his technique is really great for a freshman. Um, good contesting with length, not fouling, pretty good hand placement and timing on the ball. Oso Igadaro, like, legit player, cannot face up on Klingon, and he sw swats that jumper. Um, his, his size really does show up. And, I mean, that's important. It, it does for, like, a lot of the best rim protectors in the league and in history as well. Um, just being absolutely enormous. Like, it's the first step. Like, it's, you know, it's not the only step, but it's the first step. Um, he just gets to shots that you don't think guys should get to. Um, the length and the timing are so great. He's so good, like, kind of delaying his jump a little bit to meet them at the apex. Um, he does that quite a bit. Like, quickly turning here to block that shot he's huge he's absolutely enormous and even when like the rotations are a little slow which we'll get to the being kind of slow is also one of the big issues um like he's a little slow loading up but he's still able to get to that shot at its highest point with pretty decent vertical explosion but with the being giant thing obviously has trade-offs um the main one being Klingon's mobility notably his like larger space ground coverage where He's playing, you know, drop here and gets absolutely burned. Ends up getting back in that play and altering a shot, which, you know, is great of him. But I think the, the main concern here is just how slow Klingon is moving at times. He really struggles to contain, like, quick actions where Klingon's a little out of position here. He just generally doesn't need... I mean, or, or, doesn't need to be this high and he's playing really high and again he's not going to be mobile enough to turn his hips recover and to really make an impact on the shot even though he has the great length you can see on on this example of just how slow his hips turn around like it is it is a a, a struggle for him to catch up with Oso spinning immediately catching off a dribble a quick like reaction quick change of direction it's not going to happen at all and of course you know he's 7-2 he's going to be a primary five room texture type but this stuff does matter a lot in the modern nba especially to have like a baseline um, of this kind of ability sometimes um his lack of speed and vertical and high-end vertical athleticism just lead to moments where he's not as effective in rim pro but the rim pro stuff is mostly nitpicky because he's still an amazing rim protector absolutely amazing we can see one more example of like the hips not moving super quickly um, obviously he's able to like get back and contest because because they're right at the rim but it's def it's clear to see the like the tools that work and the tools that don't work and obviously him being able to contest is great because he's giant that's what he does Again, definitely not a fair thing to ask, but if you ever run him through a screen, he will not be able to um, continue playing defense on that possession. But I don't think it's, like, horrible mobility. Um, I think his mobility for, like, 7-2 guys is honestly probably pretty average, um, just because a lot of 7-2 guys are terrible movers. Like, this is pretty good quick slide. Like, when he has to slide in one direction, and obviously can use his length and stuff for blocks, he's pretty decent. He's pretty good in these like face up situations where again he doesn't have to change direction suddenly or really react to quick actions. He can just kind of slide, sit down, use his really solid feet to make plays there. And it's not like the like he gets destroyed just because of how crazy his recovery tools are. Like this is a clear win for most players on most defenders. 
like you're lower than the other guy you have a step in the paint clear lane to the basket but because of Klingon's size and sheer length like he can make a play on that ball and make that shot really really difficult and there are some closeouts where I think this, this was like a, the best closeout I saw from him where he was pretty quick turning his hips and getting around obviously you know he's playing against a generally like slower ball ha- ball handler here another big but still solid turning and, and opening up his hips to get around there the, the mobility is definitely not all bad and I think this is made up for in some because of how great his pick and roll technique is he's such a polished big defender for a freshman and that's pretty rare to see obviously he's just very sound and doesn't make a ton of mistakes in pick and roll where you see him wisely sit back and not play too aggressively to call it and he tracks back with his length and deflects that pass you know not revealing his hands until the end there he's pretty okay laterally as i mentioned can get from this point and use his length again to disrupt guards trying to slash and score and i just really like how sound and non-committal he is um this is a problem that I, th- I think he's gonna get comp to walker kessler a lot for reasons and this is something that kessler still still struggles with like the discipline the jumpiness but we see him not over committing to kugel he understands that hawkins is still attached He's not over committing to Castleton either. He's still in like in the area where a contested matter and he's there in position for the rebound. It's really good stuff for a freshman with his size and tools. And the instincts are really good too. Obviously, I think like the speed and the slowness means that he's just gonna be a step late a lot of the time, but really solid, like rotating from the elbow here on this baseline drive and getting very close, you know, probably all possibly altering that shot. As I mentioned, he stays down, um, not jumpy at all. Like the again, he's not jumping or biting on this fake, and is able to stand there and get and get his steal anyways. This is what Kessler does, and it's really impressive. I'm not sure if it's like an all D, you know, all D defensive player of the year anchor level profile, but it's really really good. The blocks are amazing. Um, that's that's great steal numbers first for like a legit seven two seven one center. Great, you know, indicators, great, great, great everything, basically. And the thing in with Klingon, of course, is that, like, he only played 13 minutes a game. Like, he didn't play very much. He was obviously amazing in the per 40s, the per, per 100s. He was so consistently good in his minutes, but that's definitely going to be something we want to see improve. Um, the list of, like, freshmen drafted who played as few minutes or less than clean is mixed like they're definitely guys who worked out like Vassell and like and like Kessler funny enough Cam Johnson there are guys here who work out but there are a lot of you know kind of misses early in the draft like Minsky Prince maybe Payne DJ Wilson but I think if you up like the BPM threshold which um what's his name Klingon is really high in so if we go like five BPM as a minimum which Klingon is at 10, so he would be towards the top of this list. Um, actually, I think he would be first. He would be first, yes. Um, Klingon would be first on this list in BPM. You kind of filter out a lot of the worst players, like still Vassell, Jane, Kessler, OG, and Anobi, Reggie Bullocks, Jordan Poole. Um, so I definitely think his statistical indicators are strong, and it's a strong consideration. And at least like looking on tape, when you look at these other giant centers, like that came out and were really touted for the rim pro. Like he's so much more technically advanced than most of them. Like Mo Bamba, just as an example, someone who also was extremely large, great block numbers with some movement skill issues, was just so much less disciplined and aware than Klingon is, um, and just not very good technically. Um, had these you know bad footwork, leaning on the left side here. And also just very weak and swiped away. The change of direction wasn't great either. A lot of like movement similarities, honestly, um, which is not incredible. But um, yeah, point being, he's so much more technical than all of these guys. Um, so I think the defense is really great. Offensively, like there isn't a ton um, at this point. He just like catch and finishes, which is fine. Um, I definitely think I would like to see more of some kind of passing, dribbling, something else, even better, like quick decision making, but. 
He's very large, and the finishing is good. Um, I think Klingon is like a low-end lottery guy for me at the moment. Um, I st- I'm not sure I'm totally in on like the highest end ceiling with him, but I think he could be like a top 50, 60 player like year in and year out as someone who can be like a defensive anchor for a pretty good defense um, with his really impressive combination of size and technique and timing and length and potential mobility improvements when he gets, you know, NBA strength and conditioning. But again, I think the movement is like, compromises the ultimate ceiling um, and the offense potentially compromises the ultimate ceiling, but he's really good. And I'm very excited to see Klingon in, in, in this new role with, uh, with definite with, with a UConn team lacking like Hawkins, Andre Jackson, etc. cetera, um, that is going to rely on him a lot. So let me know what you think of Klingon. I think, I think he's going to have a good season.